Hello everyone, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about the triangle congruency theorems. These are the theorems that prove if triangles are congruent or not. There are one, two, three, four, five of these theorems that we need to learn today, and here they are right now. The first congruency theorem is the side, side, side theorem, abbreviated SSS. So basically, whenever you have two triangles, all with matching sides, for instance, one side congruent, two sides congruent, three sides congruent, then you're going to be congruent through SSS, which stands for side, side, side. Next, we have side, angle, side. This is when you have a side, an angle, and then another side in that order that are congruent. Let me show you an example. Let's say this side is congruent here, this angle is congruent here, and then this side is congruent here. One thing you'll notice me do all day is that depending on if the sides are congruent, I have to put a different number of tick marks. In other words, if I just write this, like this, and I get lazy with my notation, this is not good, probably, because this is saying that every side is congruent. And I'm not saying that. I want to say that this side is congruent to that side, and this side with the three tick marks is congruent to that side with the three tick marks. So they don't always have to have one tick mark per side. They should actually, most of the time, have different tick marks because most triangle sides are not equal to each other. So now we've covered two of them, three more to go. The next one is going to be angle, angle side. You have this whenever you have angle, angle, and a side congruent, again, in that order. So let's look at what this looks like. Angle here, angle there, angle here, angle there and then a side, let's say that one. So these triangles are congruent as well. The next one, let's say, is angle side angle. That, again, I think is pretty straightforward. I think you get the naming convention at this point, but here's what an example of what this looks like. Choose any angle, it doesn't matter. Let's say that angle, then choose a side like that, and then choose another angle like that. And again, they have to be in order. In other words, if I'm saying ASA, I can't do, for instance, let me just show you what's wrong. I can't say this, angle here, side here, angle there. That would be wrong because this is actually, you have to go in order. This is side, angle, angle, S-A-A, -A, which isn't actually a, a theorem. You would write it in the reverse, angle, angle, side, because that's more typically how we write it in geometry. So we're almost done, just one more to go. This last example is, I would say, the weirdest because it only works for right triangles. It's called hypotenuse leg. I'm going to write this one out. It stands for hypotenuse leg, and it's only for right triangles. Remember, right triangles is any triangle that has one right angle. So, for instance, let's say I have this, and let's say I have this triangle. And both of them have a right angle right there. And let's say I know the hypotenuse is congruent. Well, now I need just one of the legs to be congruent to the other. That could mean this side and this side. It could have also been the other side, but one leg has to be congruent to the other for hypotenuse leg, HL, and it also has to be a right triangle. It has to be, that's the rule. Now, the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about one theorem that is not a theorem. In other words, these triangles would not be congruent it's called the side-side angle. As a matter of fact, it's basically the only combination we have left. Actually, that's not true. The other combination is A, 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 angle, angle, angle. Both of these are not congruent. So if you ever, for instance, see this triangles where you have a side here, a side here, and then an angle here, most likely they are not congruent because this is side side angle, which is actually not congruent. It's not enough information. You would need either one more side or one more angle to actually prove that they're congruent. And the way that everyone, and I mean everyone, in geometry remembers that SSA is not congruent because what happens if you spell that backwards? I'm not gonna write it down. You can think about it in your head. But basically, if you think SSA is a congruency theorem and you think it's congruent, then you are basically as smart as the word reversed. If you get my joke, ha ha ha. If you don't, try watching it again. Maybe you'll get it the second time around. And with that, let's look at some examples. 
So for this first one, let's say I have this triangle and this triangle, and let's say we have congruent here, we have a side congruent here, and we have another angle congruent there. And then the exact same matching pattern on the other side. Before you actually tell me the answer if it's congruent or not, and which theorem we're using, I'm gonna say we have sides or vertices A, B, and C, and on the other triangle we have D, E, and F. And the reason why this is important is because when I say two triangles are congruent, the order matters for that triangle. So first I wanna say that we do have an angle, then another angle, then a side. In other words, we have A, A, S. And this does not spell a bad word, which means it probably is a congruency theorem. So it is, it, it's congruent. And the way I'd write this, I would say triangle A, B, C is congruent to triangle D, E, F. And that's just not because they're in alphabetical order, but because if I match up each angle, like this is the red angle I'll call it, matches the red angle, A matches D in other words, B is the thing with nothing on it, so is E, so that's why they match up with each other. And then F and C, they're the angles that have the two lines on them, so they also match with each other. That's why the order matters. So basically, what I'm saying is, let's say I said cab instead, if I said triangle cab, well then it'd have to match it up. What would it be? Matching it up the right letters, it would be F, D, E. F, D, E. Now, both of these answers are correct because we're talking about the same triangles, and it doesn't matter which one you choose, it doesn't matter which triangle you choose, what matters is that you're being consistent with your sides and angles and making sure they match up perfectly. So now let's look at some more examples. For this next one, let's say I have a triangle that's like this, and then another triangle that's flipped upside down like this. You may be inclined to say, hey, these triangles can't be congruent because they're upside down versions of each other but that's not true, they very well could be congruent and you will find out how. So let's say this is A, B, C, let's say this is D, E, and F. Let's say we have these sides are congruent here. I'll tell you this angle's congruent between C and E, and then I'll say this side is congruent as well between the two triangles. Do we have enough information to say they're congruent? Well, it looks like on triangle A, B, C, We've got a side, an angle, and a side. So you've got SAS on the left. And on the right, you have side, angle, side. Same thing. So it looks like we're good. We got side, angle, side here. Which means they are congruent. And how would you write that? You would say triangle. For the first triangle, it doesn't matter the order. You can say any triangle order you want. I can even say ACB if I wanted to. But now I need to match it for the congruent triangle on the right with DEF. So where did I start? I started with A. Okay, so A is the thing with nothing on it touching the one tick mark. That sounds to me just like F. So that means F is gonna go first. Next, I need to match up C. C is the one with the angle, which is E. And then B and D must be congruent because they're the only two left, but also because they're touching the two tick marks. So in other words, what's the order? If it's A, C, B, the matching order is triangle F, E, D. And if you don't understand, please post in the comments below. If you do understand, then let's see if you can get the next one without any help. The triangle looks like this. It's actually kind of advanced. You might not get it, but we'll see. So I'm gonna say we have this shape, R, S, T, U, V. You'll notice how many triangles do you see here? Even though they're connected in the middle like a bow tie shape, there are two triangles. We'll call it triangle one, and we'll call it triangle two. So they very well, those two triangles, the red and the green, can be congruent to each other. So now, let's say what we've got congruent. I know that angle S is congruent to angle V, because I said so, it's given in the problem. And then let's say side ST is congruent to side TV. And that's all I know. So in other words, what do we have right now? We've got an angle and a side. Is that enough to prove it's congruent? No, it is not. So you would be inclined to say, hey, these triangles are not congruent. However, one thing you're forgetting is the power of vertical angles. What is a vertical angle? Well, vertical angles are angles where they basically intersect and they're congruent because they're on opposite sides. What I'm trying to say is angle T and angle T, more specifically RTS and UTV, are congruent to each other because they are vertical angles. 
Now you can see we have an angle, we have a side, and then we have an angle. These are going to be congruent by ASA. And again, I need to match these triangles up. So it looks like side, or really angle S, matches angle V. It looks like T is going to match T for both. So I'll put two circles around it, but you technically don't have to do that. And then R is going to be congruent to U. Now, technically, you don't need to do anything I'm doing right now with this colored pencil stuff, especially if you don't have colored pencils, but it doesn't matter because all you need to do now is say, match them up. So let's do red, blue, green. So that means RST is congruent to triangle red, blue, green, UVT. And that's how we know that they are matched up and congruent because we went in the right order. Okay, two more examples for us today. Here's the next one. Next one's even gonna be harder than the last one. I know that seems hard to believe, but it is. So these triangles, not drawn to scale. Don't worry about that. We have triangle F, G, H, I, and J. Once again, how many triangles do you see? You should see two. I'm also gonna tell you that this triangle and this triangle are both right triangles. They have a right angle right there. I'm gonna tell you that these sides are congruent and also these sides are congruent. So right now, if you were to count, looks you got an angle, a side, and another side. Looks like we have A, S, ooh, I'm not gonna finish that. That's not good. So we don't have a triangle congruency theorem, except we do. Why? Because we have hypotenuse leg. Remember, you can only use that for right triangles. And we have a hypotenuse right here, and we have the right angle here, and we have a leg, F, G, and J, I. So we have everything we need for H, L. Now I just need to match up again the different vertices. So definitely G is gonna match I because they're both the right angle. Definitely F is gonna match J because they're in the same position as well. And then again, H is kind of shared between the two. So I'll circle it both times. So that means triangle, I'll say G, F, H is congruent to which triangle? Well, blue, red, green was the order I did first. So that means blue, I, red, J, green, H. These are the triangles that are congruent. And now just one more example for us. This one's the hardest one of all. Let's say I have this triangle right here and I'm gonna put a perpendicular bisector in the middle of it. Well, actually, I don't know if it's a perpendicular bisector, but I do know that this is a right angle and this is a right angle. And I know that this hypotenuse is congruent to that hypotenuse. So right there, I kind of gave it away. This is hypotenuse leg for sure, if we can prove that it's hypotenuse leg. In other words, I only see the hypotenuse congruent. I don't see any more markings. I can't say this is congruent to this because we don't know that. You can't just make up your own lines. That's not fair. So it looks like we're stuck, except for the fact that this line right here, which I'll highlight in red, is shared between the two triangles. Oh yeah, I forgot to give you letters. Let's say this is M, this is N, this is O, and this is P. It looks like NP is shared between the triangles. What does that mean? It means they are congruent to each other, which means we do have a leg. We do have a leg. And so now I can say triangle, doesn't matter the order for the first triangle, but I'll say MPN is congruent to which triangle on the right? Well, following the same order of M, P, N, it's going to be triangle O, P, N. And we know that these triangles are congruent as well. So hopefully you have a pretty good idea now of the triangle congruency theorems. This is one of the most important topics in all of geometry, especially because we do a ton of proofs with these triangle congruency theorems. That and the CPCTC theorem, which says congruent parts of congruent triangles are congruent. But I'll cover that in a separate video. So thank you all for watching. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care and bye-bye.